Hey, welcome to Theology Tuesday. We're so glad that you've joined us. If you have a Bible, I want to encourage you to grab it. And we're going to go to the book of Psalms right in the middle of the Bible. And we're going to go to chapter 27. Last night I was praying and I was spending time with the Lord. And um, I started to read Psalm 27 in the reading plan that I'm following for the year. Um, and while I was reading this, I finished and I, my soul was so refreshed and I was so encouraged because I know that this passage is, is going to encourage you today. So I, wanna, I want you to read it with me. And just remember that this is just a supplement, not a replacement of your own personal communion with Jesus. We want to use this just as a kind of a way to encourage you to start doing this on a daily basis so that you would grow in your hunger for Jesus. So we're going to go to Psalm 27. We're going to read together, talk about it together, and then we're going to pray uh, through this psalm together so this is what the lord says in psalm chapter 27 the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear the lord is the stronghold of my life of whom shall i be afraid when the wicked advance against me to devour me it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall though an army beseek me my heart will not fear though war break against me even then i will be confident I love this verse. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. For in the day of trouble, He will keep me safe in His dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of His sacred tent and send me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me, and His sacred tent will sacrifice with shouts. I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide me. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God, my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your ways, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. But I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. I mean, what a beautiful passage. Uh, uh, now we need to ask ourselves, who wrote this passage? And we know uh, that David wrote this and we got to ask ourselves all right where is David writing from what was kind of the context what is happening so apparently uh, David was exiled from home and King David was um, hunting him down and he wanted to kill him so uh, literally David is running away and he's kind of writing his thoughts in the middle of, of this thing that is going on with them uh, so kind of the overall uh, theme of the passage is what to do when you're paralyzed by fear what do you do when you're paralyzed by fear? So in this passage, we have three, t uh, three types of fear. Number one is fear of circumstance. Now, I don't know where you're from, but here I live in Iowa and we had a really bad winter. It was really cold and it, sn it snowed a lot. And one of the things that happened once uh, uh, the, the weather starts getting better, uh, and if you have a car, there's something called potholes. Everybody loves them, right? And so when you're driving through a pothole, right? You're driving your nice car, uh, you're following the, the, the speed limit, probably not me, but some people do, uh, and you're driving through uh, the potholes. And this is what you do not do when you drive over a pothole. You don't close your eyes and then let go of the steering wheel and, and start thinking, all right, whatever happens, happens, right? No. We don't do that. We hold on tight to the steering wheel and then we look and we focus on the road ahead. In the same way, when we're going through spiritual pot potholes in our life and we're going through difficulties with our circumstances, we don't just say, okay, whatever happens, happens. What we do is we hold on, we hold on tightly to the Lord and we focus on the road, knowing that God is in control of what is going on around us. So, but, but what we do not do is that we let go of everything and we're like, you know what? It's fine. Whatever happens, God will tell control. No, we hold on tightly to the Lord and we trust Him even in our circumstances. And when you know who God is and when you trust Him, you're going to be able to face up potholes in your life. I love what Romans 8, 20, uh, 8, 
31 says, or 28, Romans 8, 21 says, if God is for us, who can be against us? And the whole idea of this passage is that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. I love that passage. And you know why David was able to confidently say that he was able to trust the Lord? It's because he knew the Lord. So the more time you spend in God's Word, the more time you spend meditating on God's Word, the more time you spend praying, the more you're going to be able to trust the Lord even on those circumstances in your life. I love verse 4. This is literally one of my favorite verses. And it says this, One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. I love what the uh, author of Hebrews says in Hebrews 12 too, when he says, Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. If you could ask God for one thing, what would it be? If you had the opportunity to ask God one thing, what would you ask for? You know, David's desire and David kind of like David knew that he wanted God himself to be his world. I'm like, God, I want you. I don't want anything else. I don't want riches. I don't want people. I don't want, you know, I don't want things in this world. I just want you. I want you to be my world. And our single most desire simply to dwell with God, to know that he is enough, to know that God is enough and to know that God is enough. I think you know you get the point. You know, if we have Jesus, we have everything. We don't need a relationship to complete us. We don't need a job to complete us. We don't need a degree to complete us. We don't need even uh, to go to all these places, conferences, and, 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 and all these things to complete us because we are already completed in Christ. We are completed in the person of Jesus Christ. So we are called to fix our eyes on Jesus, to gaze upon his beauty and to dwell in his temple forever. Now, number two, we see fear of failure from verses 7 to 10. David was aware of his weaknesses. He knew that he was prone to, to kind of like abandon the Lord because of our sinful nature. And we should also be aware of our sinful nature and of our weaknesses. And so that's why in verse uh, 8, he's like, My heart says of you, seek his face, and your face, Lord, I will seek. You know, Paul writes in Romans that, I mean, I want to do what I'm, I, I, I don't do what I'm supposed to do. And, and I, I end up doing what I'm not supposed to do. And that's our sinful nature. You know, I know that some of you want to grow, that most of you want to have a personal relationship with Jesus, but your flesh says, nope, I don't want you to do that. The enemy doesn't want you to do that. But, but we need to be determined to say, you know, I'm going to seek the Lord. I'm going to seek his face and I'm going to grow to love him even more every single day. So we should be aware of our sinful nature but we should seek the Lord even in those moments of our lives. Now, number three, fear of the future. Fear of the future. Um, I don't know about you, but I love paintings. I love putting paintings on the wall. In fact, around if you could see this room right now, there's a lot of paintings around. But there's something that you do not see on a painting Right? When you see a painting with a frame, you can only see that limited version of the painting. For instance, maybe when you take a picture with your friends and maybe you're at the beach, you can only see your group of friends and maybe some part of the beach. But you didn't get to see what's, when you're looking at that picture, you don't get to see what's around that picture. You didn't get to see what's uh, kind of five miles away from that beach. You do not get to see the whole spectrum of that painting, of that picture. And in the same way, when we look at God, God is not limited to a frame. He doesn't see this little painting, this little picture. He sees the whole thing because He created the universe. He created you and He created me. So He knows the future. He knows what's going to happen tomorrow. He knows what's going to happen in five seconds from now. We do not know all of those things, but we can kind of confidently say you know lord i trust you because you know my future you hold my life and you hold my future i was uh, thinking of what um uh, there's a guy called stuart stuart hamblin and he says something that maybe some of you are some of you guys are familiar with he said i know not what the future holds but i know 
who holds the future. You know, and, and David was aware of this at the end of this psalm. He's like, you know, I, I remain confident of this. I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And maybe right now there are certain things in your life that are not allowing you to see God's goodness. Maybe there's some financial struggles that you're going through. Maybe there are some relationship issues. Maybe there are some mental things that you're going through and those things might not be allowing you to see the goodness of God. But let me just say this. God is good regardless of what is going on in your life right now. God is good. God is good. God is good. And I know you might not be able to see it today, but I promise you that God is good and that you eventually going to see his goodness displayed in your life. And so that's the God of the Bible. That's the God we serve. That's the God from this passage. And so we're going to pray and we're going to ask the Lord to help us with our fears when we're paralyzed by fear, to, that we would trust the Lord, that we would know him deeper and that we will remain confident in the fact that he's good. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for your love towards us that while we were still sinners, you died for us, Jesus. Lord, thank you because you took our place and thank you because you give us an opportunity to accept that gift of salvation, Lord. And now we can have a relationship with you. Not, it's not about following a system of religious rules, Lord, but it's about following you with so much joy, Lord, and knowing that you are enough in whatever circumstance we're in. We love you, Jesus. And help us to understand that you are good, no matter what. That we would gaze upon the beauty of who you are, Jesus. And we pray all these things in the precious name of your Son. Amen. Hey, we hope you can join us next week for our next Theology Tuesday. Uh, and I hope you can join us then. Bye.